Some people think that I don't like new games. Why, well, I absolutely love new games, as long as they're for my old systems. Hey, I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today we do the review of Rebooteroids for the Atari Jaguar. Second Opinion Games. So here is my copy of Rebooteroids, straight from Atari Age. And it comes in this weird little folder, has a piece of Atari Age tape on it, which we're going to tear open right now. So there's no shrink wrap here, it's just in that folder. And the box is very glossy and shiny. It doesn't really feel like a true Jaguar box, but it is the right shape and size. And the insert looks great too. And the manual, full color and very well made. It feels like quality through and through. So we look at the packaging, another piece of thing here, tear that open with a Jaguar sticker this time. Awesome. We'll save all these bags for later and there's the card and that's it, Rebooteroids. So in case you haven't heard of it yet, Rebooteroids. It's a revamped version of Asteroids, 100 levels long for the Atari Jaguar. And this game is freaking amazing. The backgrounds while you're playing aren't too absolutely crazy like Tempest 2000. The music is really good, but there's only a couple of tracks, but you really don't even notice it. Just like the first time I ever played Zelda, I never noticed there was only two music themes in the entire game. So here with Rebooteroids, you won't even barely notice the fact that there's only three or four songs because they all sound really good and some of them are quite catchy. The gameplay? Well, have you played Asteroids yet? Because it's very similar. There is some upgrades to your ship that you can collect along the way. Keep in mind, if you die, the upgrade goes away. And occasionally the upgrade will go away over time or maybe if a mothership spaceship shoots it then it might go away as well. So what are they? Well, there's the rear shot, which just makes extra shot come out of your backside, which I think is the worst. The uh, extra range, which increases the range of your shot quite a bit, and it comes in handy time to time. The twin shot, creates a nice power V spread shot, which is really awesome and can clear the stage very quickly and is my personal favorite. However, double damage really comes in handy in the later levels. Really also cleaning up the stages very quickly. And that comes in handy very much in the upper levels because there the asteroids take quite a few more hits before they go down. Also, you can just hold the button in for rapid fire, and that is very necessary in this game. However, sometimes it's a bit of a hindrance to fire non-stop, so you can choose your target wisely and focus on one asteroid at a time is often the best strategy. I caught on to this game very quickly. Matter of fact, the first time I started playing, I made it up to level 47 before I finally died. And when I did die, it showed a QR code that you could take a picture with with your phone and has a code at the bottom to upload your high score to some type of thing online. So you could see how you mix against other people. Also in the gaming options, you could control lots of stuff, even set up rotator controls, which basically is a special type of controller made by a very few people. You could generally find them online for about $50, but honestly I think the game plays absolutely great without it. The A button is for shot, the B button is thrust, and the C button is hyperspace. Now most of the time, games like this, the hyperspace just puts you in harm's way nearly every single time. I really didn't notice this myself. It seemed to think about it before it placed me down and only a handful of times mostly in the very upper levels did it actually put me in the wrong place after level 55 i really don't recommend using hyperspace unless you're really really gonna die because chances are it's gonna kill you bosses in this game 
I really haven't noticed many. Occasionally you get this special level with a snowflake looking thing, and that is pretty much the boss. The first time I encountered it, it wiped me out very quickly. Bonus stages, though. Here's where you could really test your skill and try and earn extra life. There's a flashing asteroid, and you have to shoot that one. You can't fly around, only move left and right in this section, so timing of your shot is very important here. But if you complete it, you get an extra life. So given that fact that there's 100 levels in this game, and I made it halfway through the game, my very first time playing, you might think that you're going to breeze through this game. But nah, -uh, because right around the 50s, it starts getting ridiculously difficult. Luckily, the game lets you save slash unlock every 10 levels. So if you clear the first 10, then you can start at level 10 whenever you want. I'm on level 57, so I can start at level 50 whenever I want. Also, the game lets you play a two-player mode where one person can fly and the other person can shoot in any direction. However, this gets really confusing. First, I thought that this would be an easier way to play the game, but no, it just really tests friendships and makes it very difficult to control. You need a lot of communication, and no one is willing to play this with me for more than a couple minutes. So you could jump over to... Combateroids mode, where it's you versus the other person. This is super fast, and you could totally customize your board the way you want it, last only 30 seconds, or maybe even have the game end at 25 kills, or 50 kills, or 100 kills. This mode is crazy. However, it's slightly broken. I noticed that the player, too, can continue on after a stage is cleared and player one is holding still which means player two could get a couple of quick easy kills in here and unfortunately this is a slight glitch in the game that kind of breaks combateroids but overall is a very welcome addition to the game one thing that showed that the developers really took their time and cared about this game is the way the pause button is thought out. When you pause the game, everything works fine. When you re-enter the game, it counts down 3, 2, 1, and then the game starts. This game gets very frantic, especially towards the upper levels. So the fact that they thought this far ahead to give the person time to adjust, to be ready for it when the action resumes, is absolutely brilliant. Thank goodness they took their time for this. The voice sampling here is quite good as well. There isn't quite as much as I like, but what is here is absolutely terrific. There's also a mode called Skirmish Mode, but it's really nothing to write home about. Basically, it's just the levels without the bonus levels to earn extra lives. Honestly, it's okay, and sometimes the bonus levels do take me out of the groove, but I do like to earn the extra lives, and I've gotten very good at these bonus levels, so I recommend leaving them in. I just play arcade mode every time. The game is super fun and super addictive. I almost forgot to do a review of this game because I just got stuck in the level 50s, and I've been playing over and over and over, always saying, just one more game. And unfortunately, it's never just one more game with this. I just keep playing and playing. There's some other options, too, under Utilities, where later on there might be cheats for the game, where you can enter those, or maybe even reset all the high scores, stuff like that. Greetings, uh, credits, all these different things are in the game, so you can check them out at your own pace. One of the things I thought was weird about it is I ordered it through the Atari Age forums there, and on the Atari Age webpage, it doesn't have Rebooteroids listed in the Atari Jaguar games, which I thought was kind of weird because they're promoting it themselves. Also, don't think that it's going to be rushed to your house immediately as soon as you pay for it. I had to wait about three weeks, but I'm telling you, 
it was very much worth the wait. This is one of my favorite Atari Jaguar games. I'm easily going to put it in the top five of all of my games, and I have a lot of them here. So, is it worth the $80? Yes, because this is one of the best Atari Jaguar games, hands down. Make sure you order them right now, because I don't know how long they're going to stay in production. So, get them why they last. But, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. So do you plan on getting this game? If you have the Jaguar, I strongly recommend it. They did not pay me to do a review. Matter of fact, they didn't even know I was doing a review. I bought this completely anonymously. So there you go, guys. This is my completely unbiased review of this game. I absolutely love it. And I think there might even be some hidden pictures going on in the background there. I'm not sure. I'm also not entirely done with the Jaguar. I'm still looking for a few more games, and when I come across it, I will review those as well. Also, I want to do a top 20 and a lot of other games that I've been meaning to get to on other systems. So make sure you bear with me, and keep on watching. Until later, thanks again, guys. Okay.